you know, when presidents give these speeches, it's got to be optimistic. You know, right. you're, you're just going to hear some of these, you know, trite one-liners. It's just going to be some optimism. It just, it just has to be. You're not going to get some revolutionary speech from any kind of president at an inauguration, right? No. But what's interesting about her is that when you really read the words of her speech, she was kind of uh, pushing in a way. Yeah. She was pushing for accountability in a way where it was optimism, but it was still like, I got my eye on you. Listen to this moment here, which uh, I've heard so many of us say how you really want to move forward in this country. Listen to this. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. That is the promise to Glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare it. Because being American is more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how we repair it. The past we step into and how we repair it. Because so many of our elected officials, they refuse to acknowledge the past that we stepped into. I, I love Joe Biden, I do. But I always would cringe when he would say, Trump is our most racist president. Right. And I would say, oh, my God, yes, we have to step into this past because if we don't, we are not going to repair anything. Go ahead, Jason. So first off, I thought her speech was amazing. I, like everybody else in America, went and looked her up and, and read the five fast facts about her. Um, she had incredible resonance, great passion, great words. It, it, it took me back to those those late 90s, early 2000s days of being in the poetry slam places. Blackness is history. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I know my soul can go right. high. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, so I was very, I just, I just wanted to snap my fingers. I just wanted to, yeah. I'm sure that's what Michelle Obama wanted to do. Um, but but she, she makes a really, really good point, which is a point that you should make when you're 22 years old, which is like, look, from, from her perspective and those of us who are blessed enough to pay attention to what's happening in this country, if you're 22 years old today, you were born in 1998, that means that 9-11 happened when you were five, four or five years old, right? You saw the, the Great Recession. You've seen Columbine, right? I mean, Columbine happened like when you were one years old. You've had clear backpacks throughout your entire life. You have lived in an America that was basically constantly under threat. You saw an entire party city of New Orleans get sunk, okay? and then a global pandemic, and then a white nationalist president, and then an attempt to take over the White House. So from her perspective and the perspective of the young people who helped put Joe Biden in office, it's like, look, if you start trying to move forward without recognizing what the hell got us here, we'll be right back to this situation in two years, not four, two years after the midterm elections, and then it's going to be worse. And so I, I, I appreciated that because like you, Clay, I'm, I'm the same way, although probably I'm a bit more cynical. Like I wasn't a super fan of Joe Biden. I just thought he could win. I've had plenty of criticisms of Senator Harris. I just thought she was more competent. I still think she's more competent than the final four that were left, you know, but I see us stepping into an America that is two weeks away from a violent coup that only failed because, not because the people who did it were dumb, not because they didn't plan, but because coups are really hard to pull off. In a less stable country, if they pull off that same stunt in Lansing, Michigan, the entire state of Michigan would be on lockdown right now. Mm. So we have a president who is stepping into a situation where like the, the past is not the ancient past. The racism is not ancient racism. We're dealing with a, an incoming president who, I mean, we, you've probably talked about this earlier in the week. Joe Biden literally had to go back to the Secret Service detail he had under the Obama administration right. because they couldn't trust that the current Secret Service wasn't loyal to Trump. What I mean, like, this is the kind of thing I've been saying. If we heard about this in a third world country, the UN would be getting involved. They'd be like, yo, that place looks like it's about to collapse. Everybody better pull your banknotes out. So we have to, I, I, I hope they're ready. I think that Joe Biden has the best of intentions. But I ain't never felt like, I mean, when he picked Merrick Garland as his AG, it was clear to me as like, oh, you, you ain't trying to get a wartime consigliere, are you? Mm. You ain't ready for this. So we'll see. We'll see. But I don't, think they're, I don't think they have fully embraced enough of the past to know how to fight for our future. I hope they heard that, heard that amazing poem. Let me ask you this. As we, uh, as we move forward, media is going to change. Mm -hmm. You know, ratings are going to go down. 
media is going to change a lot. Someone mm-hmm. like you, you're going to always be on television because you know media, you know policy. Uh, you were you like me, you, you know, you were you even before me, you were doing media before Trump was around, right? But how is media going to change, Jason? Because you know, I can recall the days with MSNBC from uh, from Friday night to Sunday, it was just locked up. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just and you know, to catch there was a predator, movie. man. Locked right, up and exactly. to catch a predator. That's all. <laughs> but I I feel like some people are going to fall off because yeah. now you're going to have to be able to talk about policy. But what are, what are, what is media going to do? Websites, uh, clicks, without uh, the bonanza, because for some folks it was a bonanza, yeah. of having Trump in office. So first off, uh, y'all, we're going to do this on the air so I can so I can catch him. Uh, so Clay, I'm going to be guest hosting for Ali Velshi on the weekend of the 13th of February, so I'm inviting you now. I'm, I'm on the show. I'm there. I'm <laughs> okay. there, brother. So I'm just, I'm putting, I'm putting, I'm just all public. So y'all know I'm inviting him in public for Ali Velshi show when I, when I guess host on the 13th. 13th, um, I'll be there. I don't, I don't want to jack up your, your Valentine's Day plans, right? So it's a Saturday. Brother, it's not the next day. Brother, I, I don't believe in no Valentine's Day. <laughs> so it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we, we be all right. <laughs> right. He's like, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. It's like, come yeah. on, baby. I got you. I got you. Exactly. Um. So, so I think, yeah, it is going to change media. And I think, I, I think we're going to see two things happening at once, and it's going to be a very, very wild west future. By the end of this year, maybe even late fall of 2021, I think we'll be getting back to something's opening. I don't think movies are going to necessarily be open, but I think probably by August of this year, restaurants may be getting back open. I think you'll have because I, I think you'll have enough rollouts where like um, uh, you know waiters and waitresses will have been able to get the vaccine and they will determine that it's safe enough to maybe have limited you know capacity sort of thing. As the country opens up again, and as we have a president who isn't creating drama every five minutes, and because which is a separate issue, Donald Trump has been deplatformed from so many different places things are going to slow down. And I think that never Trumpers, we're gonna see them quickly turn back into Republicans, which they always were, right? They were always Republicans. That's right. And I think that what's gonna happen is that there's gonna be a focus again on newsmakers who don't just create news, but provide analysis that you can't get everywhere else. Mm. And I think what you had sometimes under Trump is, it was just an outrage machine. You didn't have to have a unique take. You just had to be the angriest person about Trump's outrage of the week. And I can tell you, if you are, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna name names in a negative way, but I'll say if you took five lines of script from Wolf Blitzer, Joy Reid, and, uh, and say Chris Hayes, right? Even without seeing them, you could read five lines of script. And it's like, oh, that's a Chris Hayes line. That's a Joy Reid line. That's a Wolf Blitz line. Because you know those people are good analysts, right? Yeah. They're going to be good. And I have lots of colleagues who I think are excellent are going to be fine without the outrage machine. But I do think there's going to be some people and there's going to be some networks that really have to shift. Um, because you're going to have to go back to informing people and not just being catharsis. And I think that's going to be a good thing for the country. I agree. I agree. I'm looking forward to getting back to, you know, when we talk about the word normal, I don't mean like, let's just go to the Obama era. When we talk about the the idea of normal when it comes to media, that kind of normalcy, where mm-hmm. hopefully the news is more about policy and facts. These things are crucial. These things are important. And if we want to hold Joe Biden accountable, I hear everybody saying that, well, that's going to require work upon us yeah. to follow what's going on. These things are boring. It's a little policy being passed here, a little policy being passed there. You've got to try to immerse yourself in it like a lot of folks did watching 24-hour news mm-hmm. during, during, during the, during the uh, Trump era. So, right. yeah, I've, I look forward to it as well. I, I got to throw this at you. So um, Brett Kavanaugh was there at the inauguration. Yeah. Amy Coney Barrett was there. But Clarence Thomas wasn't there. Nope. What are your thoughts? Clarence, you know what? I didn't know. These, these, these folks are so catty. These folks are so catty and petty. First off, we had reports last week of his wife. It's not confirmed that she had any financial connection, but she was out there supporting the people who tried to overthrow the country. 
And that's not the first, second, or even 27th time that Clarence Thomas's wife has done something problematic, right? Um, and that doesn't necessarily reflect on him. But again, what we would like to see and what he's never been able to demonstrate is a willingness to think and be an independent character on his own, right? Clarence Thomas has always been a follower. So he probably saw that a certain number of extremists weren't showing up, so he decided he didn't want to show up as well. I think that's pathetic. I think it's unprofessional. Look, I, I felt the same way about athletes not going to the White House, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm like, there's certain traditional things you, you, you do, right? When the people stopped going because of Trump, it was because he had specifically actively attacked them, right? So, but, you know, when people, when Tom Brady didn't go during the Obama era, I remember thinking, like, dude, it's just because you're, like, a racist, you know, SOB. So I, I'm not surprised by Clarence Thomas, but I think when we start getting to maybe Joe Biden's first speech in front of a joint session of Congress, if we're able to do that again, right? When he starts to do more public events, I'd like to think that, I, I used to say this cynically, there's gonna be a time where Joe Biden is in a room and it's him and Mitch and a couple of other people. And they're gonna think to themselves like, Hey, it's just a bunch of white guys again, right? Like they 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 may they may reach that moment, right? You know, Senator Harris will be off. You know, sorry, Vice President Harris will be doing some amazing work somewhere else. And I do think there will be a level of comedy that we're going to see, but I don't think it's going to result in a change of policy. That's the difference. I don't think you're going to. I don't think. I I think the rhetoric is going to tone down because you're not going to have Donald Trump because because what used to happen with Trump is. Trump would say, this person's an SOB, right? Get that, you know, get that son of a bitch off the field, right? Talking about Colin Kaepernick or, or, or shithole countries. And then everybody would have to spend two weeks in media and in Congress and everything else like that being like, well, he said shithole country. He didn't say right. shit face country. Right. He didn't call him alcoholic. It's like, it was a week of crazy, crazy word salad, right? Of people having to repeat vulgar things in order to tone them down. I don't think we're going to have that anymore. And I, I think that's going to be good. I don't think, I, I think we're not going to have, you know, Clarence Thomas, it's, it's telling that you notice that Clarence Thomas wasn't there because I think under a Biden administration, people skipping out on formal events is going to be seen as problematic again. Because it's like, okay, I get John Lewis not wanting to go to a speech by Donald Trump because Donald Trump was probably going to say something about Atlanta, right? Absolutely. But if you don't go to a Joe Biden speech, oh, then you're just a jerk. If you don't go to Vice President Harris's speech, oh, you're just probably racist, sexist, and a jerk. And, and so that's another sort of change that we're going to see, I, I think, in, in, in kind of government behavior. But again, all of this sort of presumes that we get a good couple weeks or months of safety and that we're not racked by sort of domestic terrorism, which I think is probably what's going to happen. You know, holding folks accountable, which I, I certainly think we have to do. But here is a fear that I have, Jason. The first F up in the Biden administration, and there is going to be an F up, my fear is that a lot of people might default to blaming Senator, blaming Vice President Harris, mm -hmm. saying, you know, saying, well, why? Now I'm, I'm saying a, a F up as it relates to race. Right. Well, why, you know, why didn't she push him? Uh, why didn't she do this? Why should, why? And we know how black women are treated in media, black women are treated in politics. So I just think we have to be aware. I'm not saying something where uh, let everything pass, and not that at all, but just let's not point the finger at her with the first F up that happens. And I'm, I'm concerned that that might be a default some folks might do consciously or unconsciously. Well, she's there, why didn't she do anything? Well, I think it's like, you know, Vice President Harris's job is to not be in Joe Biden's ear, you know, telling him what to do. That's actually not what the Vice President does. He has advisors for that. The Vice President's job is usually, and this is, it, it's funny that you say this, so I was, uh, you know, I always flip channels um, during big coverage. I watch international news, far right, far left. I just want to get all the perspective. If I'm not in studio, I want to make sure I'm seeing all those perspectives. And on one network, they had Dan Quayle. Dan Quayle, okay, who many of you all will remember was the absolutely goofy vice president of, of George Bush the first who couldn't spell potato, okay? Yeah. And, and like, and you got to find that video. Out. And attack yes. Murphy Brown. Remember and that? Attack Murphy Brown and got in, in like in loss. He lost to a fictional. Who was a fictional person? Right. Who was fictional, mind you? But go yeah. ahead. <laughs> so um, so I was watching him and I'm thinking like that might have been the last time in my lifetime that we had a truly sort of 
you know, feckless, pointless vice president, right? Dick Cheney was busy. Um, Joe Biden was busy. You know, Mike Pence actually was busy, even though he was constantly being undermined by Trump. So when I look at Senator, when I look at now Vice President Harris, I don't think she's going to get that kind of blame because we don't know what her 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 goal is yet, right? Mike Pence was like, "Hey, you've got to take care of COVID," and the rest of the time, Pence didn't have anything to do. Um, you know, Joe Biden, it's like, "Hey, I want you to usher in healthcare reform." I think Harris is going to get criticized based on what her assignment is. And I've said all along, the moment that Joe Biden picked her as vice president, I said, look, what I would think Harris would be excellent at doing, she was an attorney general, she's managed offices of thousands of people. I would assign her, you need to go through every single government agency, every single bureaucracy, and find anybody who was a Trump appointee. And if they didn't cross every T and dot every I, kick them out. If you find a Trump person in DOJ, if you find them in the FDA, if you find them in the BLT, the NWA, the IFP, whatever it is, okay, as a staff labor an organization, if you got put in the job during the Trump administration, I would assign Harris to sort of do the purge. But I, I don't think I don't think she's going to take a lot of heat yet. And, 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 and to be fair, though, Clay, that depends on what the first screw up is. If it's administrative, it's going to go to Biden. If Biden says something crazy, if he gives like a terrible Black History Month speech, then yes, we're all going to be looking at Senator House like, for real? For real? Right, you, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> you, right. Let him, you let him say that? You didn't, you didn't look at right. the paper? Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> Wait, uh, brother, before you go, uh, what'd you think of that Jennifer Lopez performance? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say this. Jennifer Lopez, uh, you know, Chris Gaines, you know, Garth Brooks. <laughs> none, of, none, of, none of them, like, really moved me. And I'll tell you this. This both, this both dates me, but it's also indicative of why I was kind of like, you know, whatever for this year's inauguration. I, I asked you this real quick. Clay, what was your first inauguration? You ever been? You ever been to one? My, my first one was uh, Obama 2008. That was my first time going. Yeah. So... The first inauguration I went to when I was a kid, we had school off, our parents let us go in to see, was Bill Clinton in 1992. Oh, wow. And I saw Toad the Wet Sprocket and the Cranberries perform. Okay? The Cranberries. Like, cranberry. cranberry. yes. That's for my, my alternative rock folks out there. Yes. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Very early 90s kind of stuff, right? Yeah. And so I'll say this. The, the, the level of quality that we expect for inaugurations is not high. <laughs> So I didn't expect much of Jennifer Lopez, nor did I expect much of Chris Gaines. That's what I'll say. That's me being nice. Did, did you hear Chris Gaines, Garth Brooks, kind of go into his Negro spiritual voice? Did you hear what he was doing? I was like, look, at, look at Garth trying to go into... When he tried the call and response, I want you all this. I was like, stop this. Stop this, Chris. Okay, You're not moving me. And I, I have very fond memories of roller skating rinks playing friends in low places. I grew, yes. up, in, I grew up in Nebraska, y'all. That's my excuse, okay? I didn't right. have roll bounce where I was. It was, it was yeah. Garth Brooks. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, she didn't impress me. He didn't impress me. Most of the performance didn't impress me because, you know, in a, in a COVID pandemic, post-dystopian world that we're living in, the performances were gonna be the last thing. I, I, it, it makes me sad, you know, being here in D.C., I can't tell you how sad it is that, like, we can't even party, you know, for this the way that we used to. The inauguration weekend is usually fun. Oh, my God. Like, CBC epic. with more white people. Absolutely. In 2008, I had the time of my life that the whole, oh, my gosh, it was incredible. It was, I was covering it for BET. Oh, I, wow. I was, I, was, I was in the press area for, uh, for, uh, on Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. It was just so incredible. And they said Barack Hussein Obama. I didn't think they would say his middle name. Right. And I had a good time and drank and met Tiny from Escape. It was a fun time. So it I, was I can freezing. Imagine. And it was freezing. It was freezing. I was working yeah. for Al Jazeera at the time. My older brother had flown out from, from, from LA. And he was like, he was in pain. Like he had to go back to the hotel. He was like, I can't yeah. believe this weather. Like it was, it was, but it was a whole day. The vibe, everything, people were just so excited. And it's just, it's sad that we don't have that this time. Um, yeah. but these guys are at work. I bet you. 15 minutes from now, Joe Biden's going to be at his desk making executive orders. And Absolutely. that's what, that's that's what we elect him for. Absolutely.